chewy, fudgy and really chocolatey. That's what I think of when I think of brownies. So I'm going to share with you my go-to brownie recipe here using hazelnuts and raisins that have been soaked in rum. This is a delight to make. First, we need to melt the chocolate. So here I've already started to just cube my chocolate, dark chocolate for this, and you need 300 grams of chocolate into a bowl that's over a pot just like this. I'm going to turn the heat on and we're wanting to melt this chocolate quite slowly. So over a bain-marie, and you'll see that the water here is not touching the bottom of the bowl. If that water is touching the bottom of this bowl, then it may split. So we don't want that to happen, so just be really careful. And I use dark chocolate for this because I want this to be a balance between sweetness and fudginess, like I said before, but also bitterness from chocolate. Chocolate's not just great because it's sweet. I like the bitterness from it too. And that's where I'm going to be using some cacao powder. Cacao powder is fantastic to get that really nice, strong, intense flavour in there. So once I've cubed this last little bit here, I'm going to just get a spoon and keep an eye on this. You want to keep an eye on it so it just melts very gently. While we're waiting, we can get on with our dry ingredients. And I think the difference between chocolate brownies and chocolate cake is the lift. There's not too much lift with this. There's not much flour at all. So two thirds of a cup of self-raising flour. Now self-raising flour has a little bit of baking powder in it. So that's the only lift we're going to get from it. And this is a one third cup measurement. So two of these, and I'm not even going to sift this. And one and a half cups of caster sugar. That can be mixed together along with 80 grams of cacao powder. Now that's 100 grams, so we want majority of this pack. And I'm going to keep 20 grams back because I want that to dust the brownies right at the end. Okay, let's give this a good stir, just so all of those dry ingredients are together. Perfect. So let's have a look at the chocolate. Looking good. Now I'm gonna make this extra glossy by adding 150 millilitres of this coconut oil. You can see that it's liquefied because it's warmed up a bit. If it's a cold day and you're adding this, just pop it straight into the microwave or heat it up over the stove. Okay, now that that's all incorporated, off the heat, 150 grams of cream cheese. And I'm just going to just break it up with my spoon and add little chunks in. I've also brought this to room temperature. You don't want to be adding cream cheese into this hot liquid when it's cold because we're going to get little lumps everywhere. So small pieces, fabulous. And now I'm going to transfer over to a whisk and then just slowly whisk this in until it's really well incorporated. Now I'm going to add one egg at a time. Now we can start combining the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. So little by little, add the flour. Also, I should say, before you start adding the eggs to the wet ingredients, the mixture starts to look like it's curdled, but don't stop there, don't give up. Once you start adding the eggs, you'll see the mixture come together nicely. Now, in front of me, I have some raisins that have been soaking for at least one hour in 40 millilitres of rum. That's half a cup of raisins there. You need to give that one hour because the longer they soak, the more the little raisins are going to soak up all of that flavour of the rum. And you'll see there's very little liquid left. So that's what we're looking for. This last bit of flour can be incorporated very gently and you can see it start to transform. Now we can add the raisins. Don't chop them, leave them whole. I like them as is. And I'll also add the nuts at this stage. Skinless hazelnuts, 120 grams. And I'm just going to roughly chop this. I want little pieces and big pieces. A little mix of everything is fantastic for this. And I've also lined a brownie tin. Now, a brownie tin is a perfect square, just like this one, with a little bit of baking paper. And then once I've added these nuts, then these go straight into the tin, into the oven, 180 degrees for half an hour.
Now this brownie has come out of the oven and I've allowed it to cool completely in the tin. So this is where that baking paper really does come in handy because it's as simple as lifting it out onto the board and then just carefully slide that off the paper and now we can start slicing it. Now I heat up a knife just in some hot water here to make the slicing much easier. A brownie like this shouldn't be really fluffy. It should be almost cookie-like at the top. See, quite crunchy and then really sticky in the centre. So I'm going to cut them into cubes. Oh, I like the sound of that. And you can see how fudgy this is when I open that up to you. Oh, just perfect. And then have a look at this. This is all of the raisins. See how sticky they are? And they're really moist still. And that's because we soak them for that one hour. I can't wait to dig into this. Now I'm just going to cut another piece so we get perfect squares. So drain it and then wipe it dry and clean. You can see why you need to do this because if you don't wipe the knife, then you're not going to get those perfect squares. So let's cut a few out of this. One, put it on the plate, another piece, and then we'll cut that last little bit. I actually like these little end bits here, chef treats, they're all really crunchy. And then just lift that up, pop it on the plate. That one's very generous. <laughs> These ones are much smaller. And now just a dusting of cacao to finish them off. Just a small amount on the top there. Oh, that is a seriously good brownie. I'm going to dig in straight away. Cheers. Mmm. 